Davis is head of fixed income and money markets at BMO Global Asset Management, and he joins us here in studio. Nice to see you. I wish you told me this before <laughs> I locked in that variable rate mortgage some years ago, but right. that was based on what the central bank was telling us then. Yes. This yes. is now. What do you what do you think about the economy right now in this country? Um, well, we did have the negative real GDP number, but nominal growth is still high. So I think the economy is all right, and I think it'll continue to do all right for 2024. Um, which is why we, we, we still like risk assets and we still feel the economy is going to be all right here. So the idea that rates go higher is that the economy can handle it, essentially? No, and, and, and I think this is where the market, there's two ways of looking at this, and the market is looking at it from that perspective. I'm looking at it from the perspective that rates are going higher because they've said they need to, to fight inflation, ensure inflation stays down. And unfortunately, the only tool that they have to do that is interest rates. And that's why we see it uh, going higher this year. That the concern would be that just getting close to or even touching your inflation target doesn't necessarily mean that the job's done. You've committed to this thing and you want to make sure that every worry that we had, you know, a year, year and a half ago over inflation does not return. Yeah. And, and the, although we're getting closer and, and almost touching the handle, let's call it a 2% handle of, of the target, one of the things we look at, a very simple tool, it's called base effects. It compares inflation last year to uh, inflation now, assuming uh, inflation continues to grow as it has the last three months. And unfortunately, that shows inflation going higher by the end of the year. That is one of the things that underscores our, our call for at least one more hike, possibly two. Do we, can we say, because we're going to have this conversation coming up with a Fed economist on the influence that rate hikes have already had, right? Mm -hmm. There's been this big debate in the market for the last year, two years about the, uh, the, the, the uh, timing on the impact of interest rates. Is there a lag? Are we actually seeing an immediate impact right now? Are we seeing a psychological impact? How much of the interest rate hikes we, we've had in this country do you think are, are factored into that story when you talk about inflation being, uh, you know, uh, consistently showing signs of wanting to pop up here? Yeah, it's a difficult question to answer because no one knows. The, the economists don't know, the Fed doesn't know, I don't know. But there definitely has been a, an effect in regards to, we are seeing some downturn, right? The negative GDP, as I alluded to, we're seeing slower growth. The question, is it slowing enough? One of the things I didn't touch upon right here is that although we don't see an ease possibly until 2025, we think 2023 is the end of hikes. Like even if they go one or two or none, we don't foresee any hikes in 2024. So that speaks to the lag. Give it a little bit of time to see the lag. Um, and also something we'll touch upon uh, a, a bit later is that handoff to the longer end of the curve to do the inflation fighting. Yeah, I do want to talk about the bond market, but just to dig deeper. So the call you have suggesting that the Bank of Canada may not decide to cut rates, lower rates, until 2025. That kind of feeds into this higher for longer narrative that I think people are trying to get their head around. And, and certainly, I think there are some people who would think, as you're I mean, inflation, inflation readings aside, with some signs of a cooling economy through other measures in Canada right now, I mean, hold on a second, or all shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't we not just stop rate hikes, but maybe ease the brakes uh, or I don't know, whatever the, whatever the term is, should we not pull back a little bit if you're seeing signs of cooling in the economy? So, so, to, so the number one thing that we're looking at is employment, not economic growth. And that's where the difference comes in. That's why we're not saying the pullback yet. And we believe all central bankers are looking at the employment numbers, not necessarily the growth. So for us to change our call to say maybe there'll be an ease in 2024 event, we have to see the unemployment numbers going higher. And we're not seeing that. Once I see that, that changes our call here in regards or advances our call for when the eases were, what will happen. If employment starts to deteriorate sharply, you change your tune. Is that because if people are gainfully employed while well, they can, you know, kick, kick dirt over higher interest rates, they can still have money coming in to navigate a, a more expensive a, a way of life? Yeah, and you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll break it down to Economics 101, supply and demand. And you hear the, the central banker uh, talk about excess demand. What that means is people are just buying things. There's excess demand for goods. And the reason why there's excess demand is because individuals are still getting paychecks in their pocket. So as you see unemployment 
going higher, employment deteriorating. That means there's less paychecks going into the economy. That means there's less excess demand, less drive for inflation. Well, I did go to a pumpkin patch on the weekend, <laughs> and the place was packed with people mm -hmm. just pulling out money left, right, and center. So maybe they didn't get the memo of uh, the higher interest rate impact so far. Before we take a quick break here, just your overall, given your rate expectations, where do you think the economy lands here? Uh, in Canada. You know what, in Canada, as I said, I think it will be a, a smooth landing in the, in the sense that things will continue to slow down gradually. I don't expe expect any cliff effect in 2024. At the end of next year, we'll have to reevaluate because there's one thing that will have an important impact on Canada, that's the U.S. And next year is an election, so there won't be any de significant deterioration. But depending on who comes into power, 2025 could be a different story. Okay.